Shakri, for the people that have got some cash in the bank, they've maybe got a tax bill coming up, they want to try and reduce their tax, what can they, what are some of the things that they can do to try and reduce that? Like, a lot of the time people talk about prepaying interest, is, is that a reasonable idea? That's a reasonable idea. Uh, overall, uh, prepaying pre interest certainly works. A couple of my clients do that all the time. Uh, the only issues with that is sometimes the, the loan structure that they're using uh, is not, will not allow them to, to do it. Uh, they may be in different types of loans where the banks will put hurdles in front of you and in order to get out and switch you'll end up with uh, 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 problems and it'll cost you more than it'll give you in benefit. But uh, if, you have, if you don't have those problems, for example, uh, a, a line of credit or, or issues like that, then you can prepay, organise with the bank, by all means you get a deduction straight away. Then you can prepay your rates, uh, your council rates, your water rates, uh, it, you know, uh, a number of other repairs and maintenance. Uh, you might as well, if you have a high income, uh, and next year is likely to also be high, you might as well take the advantage in this year and go, keep going forward. And so most suppliers are always happy to take your money up front? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Just stepping back, Chris, on uh, the uh, last question uh, you asked me, when you're buying a property, um, Tax should be a consideration, but not the main consideration, whereas before I may have been, you don't consider tax at all. But yes, you do make a consideration. Yeah, but it's never the number one not reason. Not the number one issue, no. Yeah. Is there any um, kind of maximum amount of money you can pay up front? Like, can you pay 10 years up front, for instance? No, the legislation limits you to 12 months uh, only of any expense. So you've got uh, 12 months in which to pay, which to pay. And uh, that, 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 that's about it. It will not allow, if you pay for 13 months, that extra month will not be allowed as a deduction. Cool. And the other thing is sometimes accountants work out depreciation. Should they be going to the accountant or should you really be going to a quantity surveyor? Look, in the old days, where the accountants used to do it. And uh, for a while there, the tax office uh, used to question it. And so uh, the new quantity surveyors have uh, turned up because they are really engineers and cost estimators and they produce a much better report than what we do and of course the tax office relies on it because they're specialists in that area. Sure. Shakri, in terms of uh, trying to get into um, various properties, obviously for a lot of people trying to find one and a half million dollars isn't going to be too easy. No. If they have got big budgets though, is there a set price range that you think works particularly well for investments or is it have a couple of big ones, have a couple of small ones and a bit of a mixture? The, uh, the trying to get there uh, uh, depends on your strategy and depends on the individual circumstances. The, uh, there are a lot of strategies that uh, people out there who are promoting how to buy and how to create wealth. But uh, you've got to balance uh, some of the cash flow with the capital gains. Uh, you need the cash flow in order to keep going. Uh, but you find a lot of the properties that are going to grow very highly don't have a lot of cap. And so if you can't balance, you'll get exiting the market pretty quickly, uh, especially as has happened to a couple of my clients when the interest rates went up uh, and they were forced to look at letting go of some of the properties uh, that they, they had. Thoughts from the financial side of things? So from my view is uh, uh, if you can get into the market, and I take advice from the people who understand the property market uh, overall. But uh, this is the time to enter on a low budget. You have to go in, whether it's a low budget or a high budget, if the value of properties are lower than expected and you're looking for growth, get in now if you have the cash flow and if you have the circumstances to support it. And, and the golden rule is cash is king. You've got to be Absolutely. able to hold on long term. Absolutely. Should you even be buying with an expectations of getting in and out in, in one or two years or should it really be five or ten years? Uh, that depends on what the expectation from the market is and depends on... I have uh, some clients who have a cycle of uh, three or four properties uh, every two years. They buy four, they, uh, they sell three and they keep one and they use the gains, they're, they're modest gains, but they, they use it to uh, build up the remaining property, which is usually a growth property a half the time. So uh, there are different strategies and you've got to follow, you've got to stick with the strategy because you're usually very familiar with what to, how to get value out of the property in that case. Yeah, sure. Now we're going to jump to a bit of a case study to give you some ideas on how to structure your finances and certainly your mortgages. And so in this case study, we're suggesting that a local eye in Australia goes and buys a home. Then over the next few years, they start paying off their mortgage. And then for, say, some work reasons or for semi-retirement or something, decide to travel overseas. Then a few years later, they return to Australia. And because the last house was pretty big, they don't need so much now, maybe the kids have left home, they then go and actually buy a smaller home. 
and with their old house they continue to rent that which they've done while they're overseas. Now that seems, Shakri, is a reasonable thing to do. Where's, where's the potential uh, problem or, or way to kind of tax plan this? The, 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 the problem is this, uh, if you have paid the uh, home loan of your home off, uh, then you can't get a deduction for interest because to get a deduction for interest, it all depends on how you apply the borrowed funds. So if the borrowed funds are repaid, then you cannot come back when you buy the next property uh, and get a deduction for the interest. However, if you do use an offset type of loan, uh, then what you have is a one side of the loan is a fully drawn advance and the other side of the loan is a deposit. But the interest is calculated on the net of the two. Uh, so if you have excess cash and uh, in, in that circumstance overseas, uh, you would have these people earning quite large amounts of money and so they've got a lot of cash to apply against the loan. You would put it in the deposit and therefore your dollar amount of interest is much lower. Uh, and, but when you come around to buy the next prop, you can take that money, make a private purchase, but the interest on the loan will revert back to the original loan and you will get it as a tax deduction. So you're literally financing your new home. So we'll actually pull a graphic uh, up on the screen to uh, explain that because it can be quite hard to, uh, to understand. And so effectively what we're saying on the left hand side, the before, is if you've got a loan of 500 That's right. and you pay it all off and then withdraw it, nothing's going to happen. Whereas this no. way, by, have, by putting the money into an offset, That's effectively right. your net loan is zero, so you're not paying any interest. No interest. But as soon as you then withdraw it, and on the right hand side we're saying if you then take 400 out in cash to buy your new home, which obviously isn't going to be tax deductible. No. On that investment property, you've still got a net loan of 400, and so all of That's that interest. Right. And the interest and the interest will be tax deductible because it is on an existing property uh, already drawn, uh, and the property is a rental property. So y your advantage to me. Yeah. So certainly, if the viewers didn't pick that up, and it can be complicated, either watch the reruns at 11 o'clock and Sunday at uh, or give I us think, a call uh, two, two and six, or give Shakri a call, or obviously your mortgage broker to try and explain Absolutely. the reasons for doing that. Yes. Now, whenever there's disadvantages, there's always disadvantages again. Sometimes there's a higher expense having these offset accounts, isn't there? There is. Uh, usually, you get about a quarter of a percent or, or uh, point three of a percent, but that's uh, that's minimal compared to the benefits you're going to get because once you take the cash, the excess cash and put it against uh, on the deposit side, then your net interest that you actually pay is lower anyway. So you're making savings at that point and then when you come and buy the next property and you go and occupy it and you get a tax deduction uh, at, the, at the next end, then that is even more benefit. So it's benefits all around really. I, I just feel it's a good way to go. Yeah, and certainly for some people they might think, look, I'm never going to leave the country, I'm not going to go overseas, but putting money into an offset account rather than paying it off your loan, if you pay it off your loan and, say for instance, you lose your job, the bank aren't going to lend you any more money That's because exactly you've lost right. your job. That's Whereas exactly if it's in your offset, you can take that out in cash whenever you want. That's exactly right. And, and of course, right around, uh, w w what you have situations is I have people always asking me, uh, look, we, we, we've started out with a small house, uh, we maybe received an inheritance, or we've paid most of the mortgage off. The kids are growing up and I need a bigger house. So what they do is they, they've paid the loan off and now they're borrowing again, secured by the old house to buy the new one. What happens is, because you're buying the new one and the new one is a private expenditure, you're not going to be allowed a tax deduction. And I have people crying at my office when I keep telling them that. So it's best to start off with an offset type loan all the time. Again, get the advice before you start. Absolutely. Going to do it. Advice is critical, always in front. Yep. Now, advice on the selling tug. When do people realise it's, it's um, the right time to sell the house? Is there ever the perfect time and does it really depend on their circumstances or should they try and time the market and autumn, summer, spring? No, I mean, forget trying to second guess the market. Um, I think it really depends on the individual um, and their circumstances more to the point. Uh, it could well be that they uh, are looking for a certain catchment area of school and they get their, their kid into that school and thus obviously that would dictate their time scales. So I don't think there's a right and a wrong time. It's whatever suits the individual. Because again, if the market is kind of cooling off or it's just kind of flattening out, 
then people say, oh, I'm not going to get a record price for my house. But most people are generally upgrading their house anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if it's a quieter time, surely that's a better time to actually get out. You might not get as much for your property, but mm -hmm. you can negotiate harder on your next purchase. Absolutely. And it fascinates me how we're preoccupied of house prices. You're absolutely right in what you say, Chris, in regards to it swings and roundabouts. Um, you know, most people that are buying and selling are, are doing so within a, a similar price range. Um, so to an extent, it's an irrelevance. Um, what perhaps more comes into play is the cost of money, the cost of borrowing at that moment in time because it's a pretty hard thing to pick the market because in my areas say the eastern suburbs then January and February were ridiculously strong mm -hmm. and then literally overnight on the 1st of March it seemed to be suddenly it was cooling off mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. does it generally happen that quick did it happen that quick in your area or is it generally over, kind of over a longer period of time in our area it tended to be over a longer period of time but I did hear about uh, the tap being turned off in the eastern suburbs um, so it can be quite dramatic um, but as I said it depends on the, the suburb itself yeah and look it's never going to be perfect situations of being able to sell in a boom, buy in a bargain, have low interest rates, have high rents. It never happens. The stars are never aligned, are <laughs> no, they? No, that's right. That's very true. And, and certainly when it comes, is, is that the general rules as well? That Look, you're never going to be able to time the market. It's never going to be perfect. So just, if you've got the cash, buy it. Absolutely. Look, I mean, there's a lot of luck involved with timing. Um, but I would say, look, if it feels right, do it. Yeah. And your thoughts? Look, my, my thoughts is, uh, again, so a lot of my clients are uh, involved in, in a journey to create wealth through a property so they're quite educated and it helps if people can educate themselves on the swings and so forth and there are rules of thumb that the agents usually know uh, you know particularly with uh, maybe auctions and so forth so if they can if they can play to the basic rules they should get up in front there's yeah. no no promises but usually if you the better educated you are you get a better feel for the market if you're in it all the time you're looking at numbers you should be able to get a, make a better purchase. And it's interesting the way you talk about your clients, saying it is a journey. It is a journey. It because is. it's not just an instance, right, I'm going to make some money. No. It's over a long period of time. Well, property is a long-term type investment, and you won't, uh, you know, by the time you pay stamp duty, uh, and if you sell, you've got to pay uh, um, capital gains tax, and in between you've got losses and so forth. It really is not a long time at all. You've got to be in there a long time before uh, the value uh, develops, and before you get over all these expenses that are in the middle in order to come. And people want to create wealth, so they want more than one property, and it takes them a lifetime to develop that by that stage they've got enough to retire on or at least have time on their hands they don't have to work if they don't want to yeah and Doug it's interesting to uh, hear that you're a renter as well a lot of the viewers are surprised when I say I rent that I buy lots of little properties and I go and rent the big one are you renting kind of recently coming from the UK or, or that's your lifestyle choice as well no it's my uh, philosophy if you like very much like yourself I am also an, an investor um, but I just like the fact that it gives me freedom of movement um, so look I make money on property or at least most of the time um, but I just like the fact that I can, can can move suburb to suburb at free will almost yeah I was just speaking down in uh, Adelaide this week and again I when we take a break at, through the house then I say to people well if I have so much property and I choose to rent why would I ever want to do it and people are so stumped like they just can't believe it because they always think it's the less wealthy people that want to rent yeah but expensive houses actually rent for about a third of the price of, that's um, right. of the little ones it's so very traditional thinking as well you know and I see I think there's a bit of a change in the paradigm going on almost at the moment yeah and um, certainly if you don't own, own, your, own your own home, then uh, all your debt's tax deductible, isn't it, if it's all on investments? Chris, what we, what we usually see at the office is that uh, the larger properties have a slower rate of return uh, most of the time, and uh, uh, the, the uh, lower-priced properties have a higher rate of return. Uh, so an advantage if you're renting to live in the place, uh, you get a lot more value. Yeah.